We may be in the fall, but with the birds that come in to pollinate, as well as the birds that come in to eat insects, we still have a lot of fruit around here that's growing, pomegranates and dragon fruit, and all kinds of squashes growing, and cucumbers are still growing. I can't complain, eggplant, not my biggest thing. Peppers everywhere, and tomatoes. Tomatoes are still everywhere on the property. There are so many tomatoes that even tonight I made a beautiful salad and I had plenty to freeze. And that should hold me over through the winter. I'm gonna walk through the trail. Look at this. Can you believe it is the middle of October and Christmas movies are already on 24 seven on TV. Hi, it is Robbie from Southern California, Zone 10A. And we're gonna do a walk through the garden. This is the turmeric. Just think, in a few months, all this is going to just turn brown, go back to the earth, and we're going to dig it up. But I will be telling you that right now we've been sticking our hands in when we want turmeric, and we've been grabbing out chunks as we need it. The chair garden looks a little dry, but you know what? That's the way it's supposed to look this time of the year. Look, I have more turmeric here. This was just extra pieces, threw them in the bucket. Look how beautiful. So now I know this is a good spot for it. No rabbits, no squirrels, no nothing bothered it. So now I'm thinking of putting turmeric around the bottom next spring. I think that's really good because here I do propagating. I've got different geraniums spotted through there and I can grab the whole container and put it somewhere if I want. I've got celery down there, garlic chives, whatever I feel like. But you know, I'll get more you know, bang for my buck if I do turmeric since I have, no joke, a ton of it. So let's see what's going on here. The watermelon is gone. Last time we picked two of them from here, very small, and unfortunately that was the only ones I grew. So we had two watermelon. Though small, they were really good. I've got some brassica coming up through here. Something's eating it, probably a moth. And I'm gonna leave it. I don't believe I even planted it. So I've got tomatoes in there. I've got eggplant which will be really good because it's protected. See how the soil has dropped way down? It is protected from the wind, so it might grow really nice all winter. And of course, my peppers. Now the peppers got attacked by something, probably a hornworm. So I'll be cleaning that up, removing the peppers and taking care of that. I don't know if any of the squash in here will make it. It's kind of growing new, you know, like a lot of new growth they're coming through. So we'll see, I'll cater to it. I'll put some more kitchen scraps in the pitcher there and we'll see how that goes tomatoes constantly though the plant looks sad and needs a lot of grooming i will tell you we have no shortage of tomatoes nothing in here except i think a tomato plant is coming up and i'm probably gonna end up with zinnias because i've been tossing zinnia seeds everywhere onions i did spot onions in here so that's fairly new this is not walking onions these are regular onions and i've got walking onions up here See what I'm saying? How green it's going? It's trying to make a comeback. I may end up with winter squash, which isn't winter squash. It'll be zucchini. I've got the red vein sorrel. I've got like, I think all these tomato plants are gone. I don't know if it's the weather that kicked them back and made them that bad, or there were some hornworms. I don't know if you can see it. There's a dragonfly right here. He's coming to say hello. Can you see him? I hope you can see him. So anyways, I'm not sure if it was that or sometimes when you have hornworms, they do knock the plant back and then when you get rid of them, they grow back the plant. Well, sometimes if anything gets in there, bacteria or whatever, it doesn't grow back. So I'm not sure, but that is a sun gold and that is a sun gold. And I have noticed that sun golds here for me seem to be weak and they don't make it through the winter. Where your regular ch cherry tomatoes, groomed back, can make it through the winter as long as we don't get heavy frost. Look at the red vein sorrel. Isn't that wonderful? And I have been getting strawberries off of my one little strawberry plant, which I'm gonna have to remember to separate because this, I ate it yesterday, has been fantastic. It will not send out runners. It's a seascape. It will not send out any runners at all because it's not that type of strawberry plant. What it will do, is, I don't know if you can see it, they divide. So you have to treat that differently. Well, we'll have to look at, see how they're dividing? It's a, let's see if I can get you in here. It's a clump. So you take it out and you separate them and you get more plants that way. So I have to remember to do that because my goodness, the strawberries have been huge. Look at the tomatillo. It's starting to get way down. Notice it's drooping down now. Oh, I feel them in there, okay. Not too much longer, I would say. 
maybe a couple weeks. All right, the shark fin melon is starting to, well, fizzle out. Again, it doesn't seem to grow in the winter. You don't have to replant it. The roots just, that's fire department I hear. I hear the horn. We'll see. Hopefully it's not coming up this way. The shark fin melon does get kicked back for the winter. It doesn't seem to make it through the winter at all. So we'll see on that. But you don't have to worry, as I was saying, because the roots stay alive and they come back. Now, this is going to be sad and a waste, but not much I can do. I've got a watermelon. The problem is this is not a sugar baby. This is a black diamond. So I know for a fact it will not make it. It's throwing flowers and everything. Of course, I'm going to water it and cater to it. But a black diamond, they can get to 20 pounds. So it's just, it can't. Because we're in the middle of October. Next month will be too cold and they like warm summer nights. So it's not going to get that. Look at these. A whole bucket full. Oh, I'm even afraid to compost them. Because if I, oh look, it's going to throw more. If I compost it, they just keep growing and growing. Here's Here's another one, and they're all through here. So I don't know. Tomatillos, that's what I want. I can pick them all when they're ripe. See, they're back there. And, and then I can freeze them. So I'll have that all winter. Pomegranates, let's walk over here. Let me show you the pomegranates. I grew a whole bunch of these from seed, and this has been magnificent. Look how red they are. Look at that. I'm going to have to pick them soon. Aren't they gorgeous? I've already picked a few. We've already eaten some all through here. And so fairly long, young tree. Isn't that something all through there? Aren't they beautiful? So this is doing really good. The ponds, I can't do much right now. The raccoons come at night and they tear everything apart. All the plants and everything. They haven't touched my walking onions. Obviously, raccoons don't like onions. My rosemary I planted there over a year ago is doing really good. There's some elephant food there and elephant food there. So that's taking off. And then I've got some succulents that I put in here. So we'll see how that goes. Like I said, look at this, they tear everything apart. Look at this. I see the fish, they're popping up and down. You probably can't see them, but I said, I'm not trying to figure out what's orange in there. That looks like a dragonfly drowned. I'm not sure, it might be a leaf. Oh, it might be a pomegranate, off the pomegranate tree. And then I've got some brassicas. This is gone, I'm gonna compost that at celery. My moringa's doing really good, look at that. Oh, there's something in here. What do we have in here? I don't know. Who's in here? Who's in here? Probably a rabbit. Better be a rabbit. That's so all I have to do is have a bobcat jump in my face. Definitely something. I don't know. Whatever it is, he hunkered down and he's not coming out. It's probably a rabbit. Did you hear him? Because I heard him shouldn't play around because my neighbor said she saw a bobcat the other day. I doubt it's a bobcat back there. I do know that the rabbits do live in there. I've got some plants growing in there. I believe those are flowers because we've had little blue flowers. The four o'clocks are kind of fizzling out. And then I've got geraniums. Now let's walk through here. Again, tomatillos. You saw it two weeks ago. I did not plant them, but isn't this gorgeous? That's why I don't plant them because I know they're going to come up at the right time all on their own. I don't think I've got zucchini here. I actually need a zucchini for, oh yes, you know what? That will work. I'm going to take this one because I know there's a big one. Let's see if I can put it in my pocket. Yep. I just need a small one for dinner. Nothing in there that I can see. This is trying to make a comeback. This is compost. Just put in there. Let's see what's underneath. Let me see. Insects. There could be. Oh, I saw a worm. This is, like I said, kitchen scraps. I put it in there, threw dirt onto soil on top. And now when I water it, it feeds the plant. Maybe that's why it's trying to make a comeback. See all this? All new because of that. I don't think there's much in this one. All I have is the geranium growing in there and there's some garlic chives. Never got to this, but the walking onions are growing. Never got to that one this year. Look at this. I should have picked this one. No, you know what? I'll pick that tomorrow. That's doing okay. Again, they're starting to make a comeback, so I just load things into the pitcher. I never got to that. I don't see anything on that. I will not pull any of these out right now. All these zucchinis. Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> I knew I had a small one. It got big quick. Okay, we want to take off anything that's no good. It's just going to pull from the plant. Just toss it back. 
All right, so I'm, as I was saying, I'm not gonna pull the zucchinis out. Look at the tomato on the ground. That one fizzled out. I think this one did fizzle out, right? Yeah, I'm gonna leave it right now. I'll probably use the soil. And that one has the tomato in it. Because a lot of these zucchini, as long as we don't have a freeze, will grow all winter. So I'll get periodically a zucchini. This is potatoes, and I haven't cleaned it out. This is just south thistle, but there is potatoes in there, and I know they're, look at this. They're on the top. I, oh my gosh. I haven't picked this in a long time, this bucket. Look at this. Let's cover it back, because I'm gonna put the green ones back, replant it back, and anything good when I tip it out later, I'll use. Tomatoes still growing in a plastic bag. That bag is gonna bust apart soon, and there'll be pieces everywhere, but look at the cluster of tomatoes. Is that not adorable in just a plain old grocery bag? Nothing here. I actually have plans. That's what I've been planning. I think I'm going to clear all this out and put totes here. So there'll be about six there and six there. What I'm probably going to do is figure out which one I want to do first. Get the totes in there and the holes in the totes. There's always holes, but I put my holes up so I don't end up with roots from the trees. And then all winter, I can load stuff in there and then come spring, I'll be ready to plant. My cucumbers, I got beans, you know, I waited too long. I picked some and they keep growing and now I'm gonna have more beans for seeds or I could dry them. I think these are the red ones. I'm not sure because I also planted purple. So I'm not sure which ones they are, but I've got a lot of beans growing. And then I've been picking cucumbers. I left one accidentally too long. But you know what? It doesn't matter. They've been sweet, even as bad as they look. And I'll put that one in my pocket too. I'll just cut it up. And I do believe there's more in there. I gotta keep this covered because the squirrels have been taking my cucumbers. They will not go through because of the tool. There might be squash down here. This is amazing, this one. I don't know if I see any squash starting. This squash goes up and up and back down and it's coming out of the bucket. And that plant is now over a year old. It's about a year and a half. It was planted last year, early spring. I left it. That's why I'm going to leave those because any of those make it for the winter. If we don't freeze, I'll be getting plenty of zucchini when I need. Eggplant came up here. So I've been catering to it. I should pick that one. I've got celery. Nothing here. There's just some tomato plants. Let's do a quick walk. Because as you can see, I've done nothing here. I'm debating if I'm going to set these up or not. I'm going to have to discuss it with Gary. If he plans on getting more wood chips, like he got already, then I can do something else with these because they had to move from here to here. If he's not getting any more, I don't know. I haven't even used it. I don't, he hasn't used it. It's still sitting there. Then if he is, if he's not planning on getting any more, I'll start thinking about what totes or what I want to set up there. This is all Malabar spinach growing on the ground. Isn't that beautiful? There's an old purple tree colored there. Probably going to get rid of the chair. Gary told me it's too rickety to use. Still got tomatoes. That's one thing I was saying. I have tomatoes growing everywhere. Tomatoes there, in there. I've got my peppers there. Do I have any other peppers? I guess not. I thought I had peppers there. These are black cobras, and they're, what, three years old now, this plant? Next year, it'll be four. Isn't that gorgeous? Full of red peppers. I have to pick them. I pick them, wash them, dry them, and freeze them. Then I have all I want. Green sorrel, more Malabar spinach. Malabar spinach all over the ground this year. I've never seen this before. More tomatoes in there. They need a watering. I haven't watered. We didn't water for two days. Our weather's been all over the place. One minute is cool. One minute it's hot, then it's real foggy and cool in the morning. So I skipped a couple days and now I'm looking at the plants and they're screaming, give me water, give me water. So I will go through and water them real good. But look at this. In here, I've got carrots that went to seed. So all I have to do is take some of the seeds and throw them somewhere and they'll regrow. Purslane growing, lettuce growing. I've been using the lettuce. Look at this. This is a field of lettuce, purslane lettuce. It's not gorgeous. And then I've got walking onions. Now there's a succulent. It's sitting in that container. I should get that moved somewhere. But isn't that something? It's beautiful. I haven't even done anything here. All this is popolo on the ground. Celery went to seed. This is oregano. I don't think I've already picked the squash off of this one. Oh, I guess there's another one. And that's growing in this little pot. And you know how I set up my pitchers? 
This is just the peanut jar, which has got holes on the bottom so I can stuff leaves in there. I can take the cap off, water it, and then it will slowly feed my zucchini. More green sorrel, and again, oh, look at this. I can see these are purples. They're showing a little bit of purple. Oh, that's full. These are about ready to pick. Not that one, but this one. See how you can squeeze it? It's full. Okay, so I'm gonna say those will be ready anytime. Purslane and I've got poplo all through here, and Gary's been using this constantly. I've never seen it grow on the ground. We've had perfect conditions to grow them this year. More walking onions, and then there's a bunch of, this is the weeds. This is the sow thistle, and I've been leaving it for the birds to eat. When it goes to seeds, the birds can eat the seeds. More tomatoes in there. More zucchini trying to grow, never planted in there. Here's my avocado tree, and then the tomatoes. This one did fizzle out finally. This is the, no, it's growing, look at this. Growing on the end, but we got a lot of brandywine tomatoes. And then that just has celery. And that looks like Swiss chard with some parsley in there. Like I said, because Gary was doing stuff this year, I let this garden go and even letting it go and working in the bird garden and other places, I got an awful lot. He's been running out here every night to pick popolo. Every night when we go to eat, wait a minute, he goes running out here and he's been harvesting popolo growing on the ground. So odd. I told the story, popolo is eaten by a lot of different insects. So when you go to grow it in a container, if you got roly polies, they'll eat it as soon as it comes up. The first two little leaves, but the roly polies hug the wall. So notice they're by the drip line from all these planters and they're growing in that water, but the roly polies are hugging the wall so they didn't eat the popolo. Isn't that interesting? Let's go look at the front yard. I'm gonna say the same thing I said two weeks ago. I haven't done much except water it. So what do I got here? I've got marigolds growing, which are beautiful. I've got a brassica growing, which is great. I've been using from that. Walking onions, and that's the end of my tomato project. That's the rosy finch. I don't like the taste of them, but I should pick some. Even for dinner tonight. Gary did spread the wood chips here about a month or so ago. I'll see what I'm gonna do with the totes. My problem is, I don't get a lot of sun here, only later in the day because of the trees. And then I'm gonna set that up later, so we're not even gonna talk about it. Brassicas that came up in pots. Isn't that cool? Look at the difference in the leaves, they're hybrids. Look how big the leaf is on this. Looks like a tree colored. And then this one I think is a broccoli or a broccoli hybrid. Then I've got my geraniums. I know, I spread myself thin. And then on top of that, I wanted to really work on the bird garden. So I think I kind of neglected this. If I clean it up and get a lot of zinnia seeds around, then it will look pretty. Oh, I didn't even show you. Let's see if it's still there. See my orange zinnia? It's growing out there. I said I put them in my pocket or I'll walk around with them in my hands and then I'll just toss some seeds around. If they make it, they make it. So I've got orange zinnias growing there. Isn't that fun? Here is beautiful, beautiful. Don't look at the geranium. Look at that, all over in two little pots there. This is all ginger. They came out really nice. They're actually smaller than usual because our weather's been cooler, but they all grew and they're doing really good. They'll probably grow until the end of November and then they'll all turn brown and they'll all die back. And that's when you really wanna come out here. I waited too long last time, I wanna harvest them. And then I'm gonna store them in potting soil in the house. Then I'll bring them out probably the middle of spring when we don't get too much water and it's not too cold because that's one thing ginger and turmeric don't like. They don't want to be wet. They don't mind the cold, but they don't want to be wet and cold. If they're wet and cold, you'll lose everything. So that is no good. So I think they've done really, really well. This is the black turmeric. See the stripe? Oh my gosh. I've got one here, one here, and one more back there. I don't know. I think what happened was I was only going to set up two. I gave Gary a container and then there were so many pieces of black turmeric. I put it back there. It doesn't taste that good, to be honest. Really, I'm quite happy with the orange turmeric. A lot of people call it yellow, but ours grows beautiful, rich in orange. So I just call them orange, but look at that. Aren't, aren't they beautiful? And they don't like anything but morning sun here. Even though our weather's been odd, I do know they like that. But now we know we can grow it in the chair garden, right? And then here's tomatillos. Now this obviously got eaten by a hornworm and they did not grow back. Somebody asked me, should I trim my tomatillos? And I'm gonna say, 
You do what you want. No, <laughs> you know, I always tell you, do it the way it will work for you. But I will tell you this. I have found that they don't grow back like tomatoes. When they're done, they're done. You might get a little more growth on the end, but they're very determinate. The plant grows. They throw all the flowers almost at the same time. Notice they're all really close together as far as size. And then at that point, I'm going to say they're done. The plant doesn't grow that many more leaves, but what it does do is it starts to set its fruit and put all its energy into, wow, these are full. See, this one's ready. Oh, see, it doesn't pull away. That's when they're really ready, but you can see inside. We can, we can waste one. All right, maybe I'm not. It's, they're harder to peel at this point. When they're ready, it falls right off. See, there it is, like a little gift. You unwrap it, isn't that cool? Then I wash them, dry them, and freeze them. And uh, like I said, I've got them all winter to make salsa. Gary likes them sauteed in a little olive oil with onions, and then you can chop it up with tomatoes, and you have a great salsa. Let's go look at the bird garden. It's still green. Isn't this beautiful? It's gonna get greener as we get cooler. Tomatoes doing really good. I've been eating a lot of tomatoes. We've got yellow. Look at the yellow. Can you see that? Is that gorgeous? So I've got the yellow. I've got the red. These are red, they're gonna turn red. And let's see. And then we've got the gold. Let's see. Oh, it's the orange ones. The sun golds, as you can see back there. So it's been beautiful. Yesterday I picked an array of colors and that's what we ate. Colors. Eating lots of colors is really good. Poor Tommy. He really didn't do that good. That's why you kind of want to know what you're growing. But I will say, generally, all the volunteers that grow around here grow really, really good. Is that coming off of Tommy? No, Tommy's back there. So I'll let him do its thing because I'm not planting anything new right now. And then I'll get something in that bucket later. Look at this. I'm not going to walk to the other side right now, but I think you can see dragon fruit as far as the eye can see. And that's double, triple on the other side. I've got here. It's all inside. Gary comes out here. Boy, these are done. Oh, these are done. He's going to come out tonight. He's been picking dragon fruit. We've been eating it every now. Oh, look, something broke this. Uh-oh. No, well, we'll go plant that later because that's how you plant it. Be careful. They got spikes. Just take this. It's already dry. You just take that, put it in the, in the soil just a little bit. Now, you can cut the bottom. See that? That's like the heart of the plant. It goes all the way up. And that is where it's going to root on the bottom. But I'm, I'll come back later. You can see so you only have to put about that much in the soil and it will grow. I don't really need it. I can get the nicest plants. I wonder if it was me that walked into it. Oh, maybe somebody was coming out here to get dragon fruit. It's everywhere. And I don't want to point you up to the sun, but there's more up on top. But it's green. Doing some cuttings in here of different flowers. But I think this is sage. And then this is, see, I like taking off the, the leaves that are no good and just leaving them back in there. This is geranium, so I just do cuttings and keep it where I'm going to water. And that's another thing you can do. It's kind of shady here, it gets a little bit of sun, not much, and they do really good and the cuttings will grow and then I can move them wherever I want. Oh, I've got my water bottle one grow going here. Look at the little bee. He's trying to get some water on the side. Can you see that? Just enough that he does. He's not gonna go inside because he doesn't want to drown, but I guess he's, I don't know what he's doing. Maybe it's cool. I don't know what he's doing. He's hanging out there. And then I've got some celery growing up here. My, look at this. My roses just exploded with all kinds of flowers and more buds. I got to do cuttings off that. There's no thorns on that one. The red one, this is kind of a wild type rose. That has a lot of thorns. But this one here, the pinky orange one, no thorns. And then I've got different flowers through there. There's one papaya back there. All right, we can look. Got this is a papaya. The only one that made it, the other one didn't. You know, it's actually doing really good. It, maybe I'll baby it and try to take care of it. And then I've got more zinnias back here. Like I said, zinnias everywhere. Mint all through there, but I'll clear a lot of that out. It just keeps growing back. Hummingbird lunch, the flowers we can see more on the other side. I'm feeding birds all day. This is the nicest place to sit and just come out in the morning with a cup of coffee and enjoy the birds, watch the bumblebees come by and feed on the salvia, all the different flowers. This one already fizzled out. This is the one that Gary bought and brought home two plants, but they're already growing more. I'll show you more in a minute. 
This is the hummingbird lunch. Very tiny flowers, but boy, do they love that. And then I've got more brassicas all through there. Look at this, a field of flowers. You wanna know what's funny? A lot of these are still in the pot. The pink emu bush, it's pink, I'm calling it pink because it's, it's an emu bush, it's got pink flowers. That one is still in the pot. And then I think, well, this one of course is still in the pot. And then I've got the other emu bush on the other side is still in the pot. The salvia is still in the pot. I kind of put it underground about that much, the whole pot. Because you know, pots from the nursery have the holes that go up and down the side. You, I think you know what I'm talking about. You'll have holes underneath, but it comes up like that. So it will send roots out and look how big they've gotten. And if I decide I want to move them, I can just pull it and sit them somewhere else or plant them somewhere else. That's the way I do it. It's easier too. And then of course I've got my beautiful geranium. I did buy that because I love that color. More mint all over. Oh, there's the plant that Gary bought. I think I was live when I did that. Look at that. Red frost emu bush. So this is an emu bush that's got like red orange flowers. Isn't that pretty? Here's another one. So he bought two. If he wants, he's gonna grab one and put it in his garden, but I told him for now, leave them here until you're ready. And then you can, oh, I guess he got three. He got three of them. When you're ready, come and get them. In the meantime, I water here every day. I cater to the plants. Haven't started this yet. I've got a brassica growing in there. Everything I planted with the auger, let me just step back here, they're growing. They have not died back. They may look bad, but you know what? Look at all the new growth coming up here. Then I've got another one here. I didn't mean to put two. I didn't know if it would grow. Oh no, let me see. Oh no, I knocked my cactus over. Okay, I'm going to have to look at that. That I had something holding it up, but it looks like it got knocked over. How's this one doing? It might be too cold for my baby cactus. Now this is just a cutting. No, it's doing okay. I have to check the other one later. If it doesn't make it, something happens. I got tons. I grew like 50 little yellow dragon fruit. You know, that's a dragon fruit. And then I've got geraniums, like I said, all over in pots. This way I can plant them somewhere as I want. I've got all this in here as potatoes. This is just Prasca that came up with my potatoes. Volunteer tomatoes came up. Hopefully they'll be good. Then I've got the brassicas here again. It's a volunteer and look how beautiful and purple this one is. And this one is not. So we have different types growing. Here's another flower, the one that died back before on the other one. I've got more tomatoes here. See, this is a volunteer. Look at that, it's all full of tomatoes. You got tomatoes here, you got tomatoes back there. Let's see, so let's keep walking. Because it is pretty much the same. Back here, I'm just cleaning, pulling leaves out, putting them in buckets or totes. So I'm gonna use, remember, all leaves, branches, that is my soil. Let's keep walking through here. It's a little lizard just ran by. And that's it, that's the room that Gary works in and we've got all the cactus that, the dragon fruit I should say in there. And then I've got a mushroom plant here. Now I pulled this one out where it was because it didn't look like it was doing good. And I've got a lot of new growth. So this is doing really good here. This needs to be propagated and trimmed back before it breaks. This is my purple, beautiful purple brassica. It's a kale. Then here is where I work. I've got my sink and I can keep my scissors there, some shovels. See, any leaf, I collect all this because I use it as I'm growing things. And then I've got my culantro growing and they're really going to seed. And then again, more cuttings of geraniums. And this is a pretty place because I've got the gazebo here. So I don't have to be in the sun all the time. Isn't this nice? And of course I've got the hose right here and the same bag that I have had all year. And I dragged out my kitty litter that got mothy, so my granddaughter gave it to me and told me to compost it, which I'm going to do. But the kitty litter, oh my gosh, I use that for a lot of different plants. I've done a video on that, and I'll probably be doing more very soon. And that's it. Oh, and then I did drag out my turmeric. I don't know how well it's going to do. Look, at it got too big. This is the turmeric that was in that room last, where well, you saw it two weeks ago, the last garden tour. So I decided I better get it out, let it do whatever it's gonna do. When it dies back, I'll get all the turmeric out. I will store it for the winter and then hopefully we'll eat a lot. I'm gonna freeze a lot to keep so we can eat and then get a lot planted. And then that's it. There's not much else going on. Everything is the same. The strawberries are actually on the ground now. 
And then I've got the rosemary back there. And that's, that is it. My Malabar spinach is going up. My potato mint is doing really good. I hope to get a lot of potato mint this year. I didn't even plant as much as I wanted to. And they're real, really small and you use the tubers as potatoes, but they're so small that I'd rather grow potatoes. I think Gary grows it in his garden. There's the Malabar spinach. I'll probably start thinking about what I'm gonna plant in there in the end of winter, after the holidays. Get these set up, because see what I'm doing? They're set up, but then anytime I see leaves, just start throwing things in there. This I'll grab and then flick it around the garden and wonder where the zinnias came from. And then here's peppers back here. Now these are doing really good. They like the shade, as my daughter always says. She's, go check out her garden channel. I'll put a link underneath so you can go look at it. It's called Adventurous Labradoodles. She's the pepper queen. They've got so many different types, leaves, of peppers, and she knows all the types she's growing. I prefer something that's not too hot. But aren't they beautiful? So they've got them growing in that bucket. I've got them growing in all the buckets, except for the middle one. But they just love it back here in the shade behind the fig tree. Isn't that something? So I'll get the rest of these done and I'll do what I showed you. Keep throwing leaves in there. Last year, I grew peppers in there. This year, I just left the geranium, but I'll get that set up for, well, after the holidays. And then here, the squash again, trying to make a comeback. Look at all the flowers. And then I've got eggplant. I think there's a second one on here too. There's another one down here. I've picked a couple. Can you see it? I've picked a couple and then they grow back right away. So we got some eggplant. Now these are zinnias coming up through here. This is just kind of some tomatoes. I don't know what will make it, but since I'm not really over planting right now, I'm gonna leave the tomatoes that have come up and see what happens. In the spring or later on the winter, I can start tearing things apart. Look at the zinnias. Do you know why they got so big? Because of this. Because this, you know what it is. I, the pitcher, how we put that in there, and we constantly feed the plants. By watering it in there, you talk about plant food, and putting leaves in there. You know, I take a leaf, put it in there periodically, not every day, come through, uncap it, water it. It leaches through, earthworms come. This, look at this, you can't move this because this giant zinnia plant has set its roots into the toe, probably why the tomato's not doing good. And it's growing that big and that giant because it's got getting a constant food source from the leaves that are breaking down. Keep that in mind. Think about it. Oh, I've got another eggplant. Oh, that is the one I looked at. I didn't know it was that big. And then, oh, real quick, I'm not gonna come back this way. I've got potatoes growing there, and I've got regular onions and more onions back there, and those are dish pans. We're gonna get more into dish pans after the holidays. And then more zinnias, look at this, all through here. And then this, I cut all the way back. I don't know if you remember, I propagated this, because this is that beautiful deep purple. Oh, look, look, look. You see what's here? Look at this. Can you see it? Right there, a little, little praying mantis. He's not gonna hurt a hummingbird, so I'm, ours don't get real big. You see him? No, I think you can see him. He went on the other side. He saw me, so it's amazing how well they can see. I think you can see him. Okay, we're not gonna mess with him. So he's looking for insects and stuff there because there's no hummingbird feeder here. I don't have to worry about that. But again, ours are small. I know some of them are really, really big, and I would worry at that point. But I did a propagating on that. I cut the whole thing way back and it sent up all new shoots. So it's doing beautifully. Pepinos, I've got more pepinos under there. So the pepinos are growing. This is an older plant. So I propagated that one and there's a pepino back there. It's growing next to the zinnia. Probably struggling since the zinnia is pulling all the food. I've got more peppers back here. I do want to separate these because I've got a regular pepper here. This is really good. These are the red sweet peppers. And then I've got the black cobra. And there's way too many. Look how many plants are in this container. Way too many. Red vein sorrel. And then this is a pepper plant that was struggling because something ate it, but it's making a comeback. More tomatoes. And then geraniums again, celery on the bottom. Looks like a baby celery. My milkweed has just gone nuts. I haven't seen it come up anywhere, but the milkweed is really throwing a lot of seeds. 
So hopefully it'll fly around somewhere and there'll be 10 more monarchs. And then let's see, more milkweed here. That's what this is. And then I've got walking onions, more tomatoes. I've got some cuttings of geraniums back here. Another place I do cuttings. And I'll clean that up later. I've got basil back here. As you can see, it's gone to flower. I've got tons of basil, so I let it flower. Some people cut all the flowers off. I don't bother. Hummingbird lunch. I do want to move that. I think I'll move that onto the deck later, my deck garden, but not right now. And then the rest of the tomatoes there. This has been amazing. Actually, I want one of these for dinner tonight. The easiest one to get off. Okay, I'll put that in my pocket and make a stir fry tonight. So that has been doing really good. I had to cover that because something, probably my friendly rabbit decided to eat the plant. So it did grow back. It's doing really good. And then my pizza garden, my combine never flowered. So I don't know, look, I put a cutting in here. Did I? I, no, I didn't, hold on. I put some cut, no, this one grew in there. Sometimes I go around putting cuttings in there. That is just sage back there. I thought I put a cutting. That's what I do. I grab pieces, shove it in there, and then things grow. But that is plain sage. This is tricolored sage back here. There, I stuck some cuttings in, in the back. And then I've got basil here coming up from the bottom. I got basil coming up from the top. I got rosemary. My thyme is dying back. I really should replant it before I lose it, but I've got thyme there. And then I've got oregano. And that's it. And there is a tree colored somewhere purple tree color. It's kind of winding through my fig tree. Look at the figs. There are figs when they come out here when they're nice and big. A lot of them have been eaten by birds, but I have also gotten a lot. And then this is just another geranium. See, there it is. See what it did? It came, went up the fig tree and it's too heavy now. And now it's coming down here. It needs a good grooming, but it's a little jungly and I like it. So I hope you enjoyed this. I know it was kind of, well, I guess it wasn't that quick, but it's just that I'm not going to knock myself out on these gardens going through all of them right now because look, truthfully, we are in fall. We're going into the holiday season, which I happen to enjoy. I can kick back and watch all the Christmas movies. I, I like happy movies. Happy movies make me feel good. I don't like seeing suspenser movies that are sad. So I stick with that. And then once the season is over, the holiday season, I will come out here in the winter and I will start to gut what I don't want and start to get ready to maybe plant some of those totes up, think about how I wanna do it. It's not that I'm not planting. I still have a lot of peppers to plant. I grew a lot of peppers, no joke, too many. I took a whole bunch of seeds and they're the sweet red peppers, the ones that grow in here. I don't know if you saw it, but a couple years ago, maybe it was last year, they were massive, just loaded. So I took those and they're growing and I have to figure out where I wanna put them because that's my favorite pepper. Because I like using sweet peppers and then throwing in one hot pepper into the sauce or stir fry or whatever I'm doing. So you get a little heat, but you're not sitting there choking and saying how good this is as your eyes are watering and you can't breathe. It's not my thing, but I know it's yours. So don't worry about it. I'm just, I'm kidding around. So I hope you enjoyed this. Now I'm going to go get some more things done because I have been working on my deck and running around taking care of a puppy who's around here somewhere. And then of course, I've been working in my bird garden. That's precious to me because I want to get a lot of the dragon fruit planted in there and a lot of tree collard. It will look very jungly and at the same time, I can eat it. So with that, have a wonderful, wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. And if you want, plant some flowers because they are just so beautiful. Bye-bye. Aren't they gorgeous? Oh, they do have a little scent. Look at that. I'm coming. I'm coming. We're back. I don't want you out here. Okay, I'm all done. Yep. We can now go back in the house. I know she comes in and out waiting for me. And there she is. She loves the garden. She loves roaming through the garden, looking for things. It's one of her favorite places to be. Isn't it, Zoe? Say goodbye.